So in today's video, we're going to be fixing this cupboard here. Everyone has a cupboard in their house that just doesn't really fit what they want to put in it. So we've got some cookie sheets, we've got some cutting boards, we've got some cooling racks on this left-hand side here, and basically they're held up by this pot here. So you move that pot, everything falls over. So we're going to get some storage for the cookie sheets and cutting boards and some storage for the pots. So stick around and I'll show you what I'm going to do. So the first task I had to take on was to empty this cupboard out. There was a lot more stuff in here than I first thought. So I got all of this out and I was able to have a blank slate to get all my measurements from. This build is going to consist of two parts, one side for cookie sheets and cutting boards and the other for pots and pans. I started this project off by ripping down some quarter inch sanded plywood and some three quarter inch poplar plywood. I used my Craig AccuCut here, but you can easily use a piece of lumber that you have lying around as long as it's straight. So what we have is we have our bottom piece here. I'm going to put little tracks on here so we can slide a quarter inch piece of plywood in and that will create our dividers. But we have our left side here, like so. We have our right side and then we have our back piece which is going to go in between both. Just so nothing falls out the back, like so, like that. And then we have our top piece here which is going to go on the top like that. So I'm just going to take some 220 grit powerful sander to sand everything lightly, not too rough. The pot floor is already quite smooth. I just want to clean up the edges when I've got any tear out. And the quarter inch sanded plywood just needs to be a little bit smoother for my liking. Then it was time to drill some pocket holes. I do like pocket holes a lot and I do use them in a lot of my projects, but for joining plywood together, I don't think there's any better way. Sometimes I put a little bit of glue on there as well. So I cut off these strips, they're one by two, I think they're just burn strips um, to 20 and a half inches and give them a light sand just to get rid of any rough edges. I'm going to figure out the best way to get these attached to the top and bottom plates and we will get this assembled. So to get these lined up perfectly, um, I'll put up with a little bit of a solution here. So I have one of my shelves, this is why I need one shelf, like so. <clears throat> and then I'm going to use these little, um, well it's actually a Craig, it's a, Instruction manual for my hack and cut. So I'm going to put that like that. And then I know where to position this next piece, like so. Like that. And that's going to allow me to slide these boards in. I started off by marking the location of the little furring strip, then I applied some glue and used my clamps to hold it in place. This is so that I could flip it over and hammer in some 5 8 inch nails. I don't have a nail gun and this was easy enough though, but I did make sure to mark the back of the plywood so I knew exactly where the centre of the furring strip was. This made sure that I didn't miss any of the furring strips and have a nail in the wrong place. I then repeated this process for the top panel, making sure to mirror the bottom panel so everything lined up. You'll notice that I left a larger gap on one side, and this was for our larger cookie sheets, because I didn't think they'd fit in the smaller gaps. As you can see here, the tops and bottoms both line up, and we have that larger gap on the left-hand side. And this is because space is a little bit limited due to the door and the door hinge. I have recently invested in some right-angled blocks to help with assembly, and they really did help out on this build. Now all I need to do is put the top and bottom um, pieces on that support the dividers and we can get this installed I'm going to put a shelf on the top. I did a test fit and the hinge was actually in the way so I notched a couple of pieces out there with my chisels and it turned out really good and fits perfectly. Then the piece that I'm calling a shelf which is just going to be the top I attached with some glue and screws. I then pre-drilled the sides and the bottom so that when it comes to install, I can easily screw this into position. The install of this was really easy. I was able to slide it in and the hinge slipped right over the notch that I had created for it. I then used eight screws, four on the side and four on the bottom to make sure this unit was secure in the cabinet, then gave it a compulsory wiggle test to make sure it was secure and then installed my dividers which fit in perfectly just I'd put them at a little bit of an angle to get across that front lip so to get the uh, drawer slide to get past this hinge I just put in a block in here um, it's about an inch and three quarters thick and it's just the length of the cabinet and that's what I'm going to put the runner on like so. Now for these runners you need to leave half an inch on each side 
So that's an inch overall. And I'm going to leave about an eighth of an inch as well on my measurements. So I'm going to get my box made out for my drawer, get it attached to the slides and get it installed. For the drawer, I'm going to be using three quarter inch poplar. I started off by ripping down a piece that is an inch and a half smaller than the width of the drawer. And this is because I want the base to be attached to the sides. I don't want the sides to be on top of the base. And this is why I left an inch and a half because the sides add three quarter on each side to the total width of the base, creating the drawer. I was trying to use a circular saw only for this build, but my battery died. So I just hopped onto the miter saw and just made my cuts for the drawer sides here. I then got out my orbital sander and sanded everything down with 220 grit. It only needed a light sand, but there was a little bit of tear out that I wanted to get rid of. And then it was time for pocket holes. I put four pocket holes on the long sides of the base and three on the front and back. I then also pocket hold the sides of the drawer as well so that they could all be secured. I also decided not to use glue here and figured pocket holes would hold this together well enough. I should add that this drawer is 20 inches deep by 16 inches wide. I've never installed drawer slides before and this one went really well. Just goes to show that if you don't know how to do something, the best way to do it is just try. So here we have, I put the top shelf back in here for some more storage. We've got all of our less used items there. Then the one you saw before with our cookie sheets and our cutting boards. And then here is the drawer. So if you like this video, make sure you watch this next video I've got here for you. I'm sure you like this one too. With all that being said, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you smash that subscribe button and I'll catch you on the next video.